there, but um, slowly, hopefully, I'll get it back on the road. Seems like every other month I start into a project on this thing, which puts it on the sideline for about a month or two, and then I get it back and drive it a while. But it's uh, it has been running fine, and I got about a seventy or eighty mile range. But, oh, I got rid of my sunroof, so I don't have that <laughs> problem that the Mod Three has anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I just should remind everybody, um, uh, uh, we're being recorded and I forgot to start the recording, so I've just started the recording as well. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> next up on my list here says Mark, that you're next. Yeah. Mark Brumbaugh, drive a 2013 RAV4 EV. I love it. That's it. Okay. Uh, next on the list is Stan. Hi, I'm Stan from Windsor. Uh, we have a 2020 Model Y, a 2002 RAV4 EV, and we sold our 2013 RAV4 EV. And I'm not really driving the Model Y because it's in the shop. Oh, really? And why is it in the shop? Uh, just some um, uh, uh, misalignment on some doors and seats and some glass was a little funky and, and a little bit of paint, which turned into a problem because they had to repaint the hatch. and Halfway down there to go pick it up in San Rafael, <clears throat> they called and said, "Oh, by the way, we we made a mistake and we our buffer got loose on us and uh, damaged the <laughs> top coat. So <laughs> we're we're going to keep it until the 17th. So I've had the car a total of 16 days. Okay. <laughs> so can I ask a question? I've been really interested in the Model Y, and I live in Windsor. Stan, can we get together after sure. you get it back? I'd sure. like to take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, how can I contact you? Um, Stan at AONC.com. Uh, so I should, yeah, let me point out something also. For all of you belong to the uh, NBAA club, and that gives you access to the Google Drive that the club has. And uh, I forgot which folder I have in this, maybe it's admin or something else. I keep a spreadsheet with all of the folks that join the club and the email addresses that we contact you on. So if you want to communicate with each other, you can. I've got like four email addresses, so pick one, I'll get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stan, <clears throat> excuse me for, for uh, kind of keep trying this because I'm not sure I know how to get into that spreadsheet. So it's Stan, it's Stan at A-O-N-C dot com. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Stan. I, uh, a friend of mine got a Model Y and I uh, took a ride in it. I like it. Uh, it's, it's significantly larger inside than the Model 3. Yep, great car. Yeah. So, and, and if I screw up here in, in calling out names, in the room it's easier because you're sitting in chairs and I can go from the front row to the back row. Uh, and here, for some reason, I can never get Zoom to stop moving the names around uh, or the faces on the screen. Bernie, you were next when I looked last, but uh, you're going to be I'm next now anymore. too. Okay. Uh, yeah, and of course I have a three and I have solar on my roof and uh, once I get a battery, I'll be uh, self-sufficient. Um, so that's pretty much where I stand. Okay. Um, Mike? Mike Newell? Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning. It's Mike. I'm still driving occasionally my 2011 Leaf. Uh, I did uh, put a $1,000 deposit on a Nikola uh, pickup truck. So I'm a little bit unclear on when those would be available, but just like Tesla, they're doing, they're following the Tesla model. And if you don't, if you don't pick it up, you get your deposit back. So I just thought I'd put my name in the hat just to show them that there is interest in, in pickups, electric pickups. So, um, yeah. And that's a cyber thing. truck. Uh, not, not the Tesla cyber truck. It's the Nikola has. Yeah, I know. I said, why not the cyber truck? Yeah. Why not the Cybertruck? Well, why not? Uh, I didn't like the way it looks. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, if if they come out, you know, like the, Nikola has more of a conventional looking yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah. If that's if that you know performs well, it's going to go over like hotcakes, man. I, I, uh, there is so much uh, call for that; it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, so, 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 wait, 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 I'm going to stop you. We're going to do the introductions, and we do have a bullshit point. <laughs> We're doing bullshit. Okay. <laughs> Cecilia. 
name is Celia. And I drive a Model 3 sometimes. <laughs> sometimes? Okay. I don't drive very much these days. Yeah, no. I, I guess not. Yeah, well, you put enough miles on it in the beginning, so uh, that's great. Bruno? Hi, I'm Bruno. Uh, I think I'm going to skip over electric cars and trucks. I'm going to go directly to electric airplanes. Okay, and we have something on that today uh, in the presentation Good. as well. <laughs> Just a little stuff. Uh, Ray. Ray, you're up. Ray. Was that, asking, was that asking for Ray? Uh, that was asking for Ray. <laughs> I'm uh, riding in a 2018 <laughs> Tesla Model S. Thank Very you. good. <laughs> John. Oh, you're on mute, John. Okay, there we go. Um, yep, still driving the little green uh, Geo Metro from Thunderstruck. It's now mine and it's um it's really cool anyway and i i hope to do some work on it soon and <clears throat> lower it down a little bit get a little better get a better mileage but i at this point i get about six a little under six um miles per kilometer okay and i'm really looking forward to the shop opening back up again because i'm really missing the donuts um <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time you get them yeah, that's the only time I get them, Bernie. That's it. Otherwise, I'm a scone guy. <laughs> Andy Mendel. Hello. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Electric here. For 10 years, I've had four electric bikes. I've got two electric scooters. Uh, got the first Model 3 delivered in Atlanta, Georgia, when it first came out. Model S, and I have a Model 3 Performance now, and a Model Y is on the way. Whoa. Wow. So, and Andy, when we get to the bullshit session, I want to ask you something about the scooters. Because I have one in the garage that I put 500 yeah. miles on. But I, I got don't two of them. Okay. Let, let, we'll, one we'll get to one talk of to anything's get... not enough. One oh. of anything's not enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. George Beeler. Hello. Um, my biggest sorrow is that my wife insisted on selling Tesla stock a couple of years ago. Oh, so anyway, right. so we, <laughs> I, I really wanted to uh, get a three, uh, but my wife insisted on getting a, another Leaf. So we have a 2019 Leaf and a 2016 Bolt. But the Leaf, I'm really excited about that because I want to have a home to, I mean, a, a car to home and use the car battery that the Leaf um, allows that. Mm -hmm. And I'm online to get a, a PV uh, inverter charger to use that. Uh, oh, and then um, wait, my wait, next when car, you when you do do that, we'd love to have a presentation on it. Okay, I'll, I'll definitely do that. And then I hope today we're going to be hearing about the Aptera because I've invested in that, and ah, um, it's going to show up. I'll be trading in my Bolt in a couple of years for an Aptera, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> All right, Lowell, you're on my screen next. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I have a, a 2013 uh, Leaf and a 2014 uh, Model S, and uh, like everybody else, I'm not driving very much, uh, but, you know, going to the grocery store and just that, it's still nice to drive. <laughs> anyway, that's what I got. Well, you got a long enough driveway, you can just keep driving back and forth if you wanted, you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you're on mute. Good morning, buddy. Yeah, um, I have a 2019 Model 3 it, that I sometimes drive, and uh, we also have a Chevy Volt, 2014 Chevy Volt, and we used to have a 2012 Nissan Leaf that's still around. Um, and I've seen a few of you lately, you know, it'd be kind of fun to talk about getting stickers or something so I can tell who's who on the road. <laughs> I think Alan cut me off the other day. Uh, he does that a lot, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's testing the vehicle to show us how it works, you know. Brad, yeah. you're up. Uh, as long as that's all he did. Yeah. <laughs> Brad, you're on mute. Hi there. Uh, my name is Brad Morrison, and I drive a 2004 Honda Civic Hybrid, so I'm hoping to get into an electric vehicle, but I haven't done it yet. Okay. And Ken. Good morning, Ken Coker. I have a um, Tesla Model X 2016. 
That's it? That's it. Okay, very good. I drive Ellen. it sometimes as well. <laughs> Ellen? Uh, let's see. How do I get off of mute? Well, you're off of mute. You you're know, if, if you're on mute, you can't ask the question, how do I get off of mute? You know that. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was trying to figure out, I can't figure out how to get a picture of you up here. Anyway, uh, um, I, drive yeah. a, I drive a 2019 <clears throat> Nissan Leaf, and I have a electric wheelbarrow that still isn't running because it needs to go to the shop. <laughs> you sure the shop driving, opens up again. You're driving 2019, you're driving 2018. Oh, maybe it's a 2018. You know better than I do. Yeah, it's. A, I think you you got the luxury model, the one I got. So, so yeah, yeah, and um, that's my it's my daughter that's driving the 2018. Okay. Um, someday we ought to have a a little talk about um, uh, what all of us have driven over the years as far as EVs, because most of the folks here, this isn't their first EV, and that's kind of interesting to see. Did I miss anybody? Okay, it's like asking, can you hear me in the back of the room? Raise your hand if you can't hear me. Uh. <laughs> uh. Okay, chapter business. And, and, uh, and it may look like I'm looking in weird places here because uh, I've got three screens in front of me. You are. Yeah, I am, yeah. <laughs> um, I keep, I continue to look for, I mean, when Alan asked us a year ago, please, can we uh, break up the workload? Otherwise, that wasn't otherwise. I don't want to be president, he said. Can somebody else be president? And the reason was that the president was doing all of the work. We picked up the work on the presentations and some of the other pieces. We do need a group to get together to be, to sign up for NBAA Press. That is a group that might respond to questions because we do get questions about EVs or we might want to make statements as an organization uh, for advocacy for EVs, et cetera. Um, so we created the group, but nobody's joined yet. So it'd be great to, to get some to lead that group and, and put it together. Um, <clears throat> the club forum now has 154 names on it. I found that 20 of the names bounce back uh, from email, Lowell, or uh, maybe we want to clean those up. Uh, sure. Yeah. I, I, I it, you know, it's, it's, uh, they've been there for a while. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know, okay. Right, right from the beginning. So uh, I'll just go I'll just get get rid of them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Um, and uh, so we have that group site. Um, I also maintain that. And here's the link, by the way, for that spreadsheet that has all the names. I discovered that Google Groups doesn't allow non-administrators to actually see the addresses of the members of the group and we often want to communicate with each other and if somebody has a problem with that let me know and i'll take it off the spreadsheet um the club membership uh, the last report i got was that 41 of uh, 154 names we have in our google group are actually paying members of the ndaa sorry of uh of uh, yeah. the eaa uh, uh, national uh, including um, Caleb, who's not, he's at the zoo today with the kids, uh, who, and he lives in uh, Washington state. Um, and we have some money, uh, that we can use for various things, uh, with the club, either sponsoring events or to improve these presentations. We're going to look at once we get back to live again, doing both live and on the web. So you guys who are further out and don't like donuts, uh, don't have to jump in the car and drive in or in the case of Caleb and, and Bruce uh, fly in. Um, and, uh, and then we have one other group, which isn't mentioned here, which is the NBAA Discuss. Uh, if you want to do a lot of talking with other members and want to bring up different uh, um, topics, that's the place to do that, join that group. Oh, so anyway, there, there's that list, Lowell. <clears throat> um, you're sending ideas for uh, meetings. Um, we we discovered that if you sent the MBA team, it didn't post for some reason. Lowell, we've got that fixed now for sure. Uh, I think so. I uh, we, we could experiment with it a little more, but yeah, I, 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 the problem was that uh, the the the, um, the message were going into in a mo to the mo a moderated bucket, and so someone yeah. had to go there and release them. And I think I fixed that. 
Okay, and John sent one the other day, uh, and he's a member of uh, uh, NDA 18, and I could not find it on three computers. Uh, and then I went back later, and I have no idea what I did. And I tried two different logins. I tried the NDA 2019 login and my own, and I couldn't find it. And then later on, it showed up. He sent it seven days before, three days before, so I don't know what was going on. Also, filtering didn't work right for me. So maybe someday you and I can get together and do some more experiments. I'll show you uh, what my frustrations sure. yeah, are. Yeah, and you usually find the stuff and I, I miss it. Um, but that's a reminder also for everybody, if you've got ideas of uh, either news items or topics to be covered, please send them to NDAA-team at googlegroups.com. And then the program team will uh, get that stuff included. Um, Tor is not on there today, but he sent something last minute saying, can we discuss this uh, in today's meeting? And um, uh, he sent it to me. It's better to send it to the team. This way we can get uh, more input. Our previous meeting, um, we had a presentation by the, the manager of um, Sonoma County Transit. And uh, uh, we took the video and it's now posted on YouTube and there's the link to it. I don't think you can search for the links yet. Uh, it says that that doesn't work until we get at least three videos and this will be the third. So maybe we'll see that that stuff works. Um, on to EB events and offers. Um, I've been doing this. I think Andy's been doing this, Andy um, Ferguson. Uh, pg and &E has a, a bunch of really good classes on uh, energy efficiency uh, for homes and the environment and whatever else, including all, all kinds of stuff, you know, how to do your duct work, solar batteries. I mean, I've been looking for solar for the house and batteries, which I'm just about to contract for. Um, and the pg and &E class helped me figure out what did I really want to have? What was the, the right thing to get? Um, there's going to be a little more about pg and &E. Anyway, I made all of the links here live as well, and you can get on their mailing list. It's, you know, once a week or so, they talk about what classes they have. They have a new administrator. The classes used to always be um, eight hours long, uh, including donuts at their center and also online. But now the new guy is making shorter classes as well. Um, Con gas, I didn't see the Woody's on yet. Uh, he may have joined later. Um, we were a co-signer. We sent a message out to the club. Alan sent a message out to the club uh, saying, okay, if we sign on a letter um, objecting to the uh, gas station at Highway 12 in Yano Road, the meeting to discuss that was canceled um, until the future, and I think it's because of the virus. If you want to get more information on this, I have the links on here in an article from, uh, I think it was... Uh, the Gazette or whatever, and then something from the Sierra Club that's talking about what Woody and the team have, have been doing so far. Oh, Alan, I think you sent this in. Why don't you talk to it? Okay, uh, the uh, national group, EAA National, has uh, several aids for organizing uh, NDEW this year, uh, and it would be an online uh, event. Um, so uh, you can go on the, the website uh, and, and uh, download or whatever, uh, view some of these uh, aids. Um, personally, uh, I don't know, I, I actually I'd like to, before I say anything, um, I like to get what you folks feel about an online event as opposed to an in-person event um, and just see if it's worth the effort. Does, does anybody have a comment on that? Well, online, I mean, uh, anybody can go from anywhere and, and, and participate where, uh, you know, Going to an event can sometimes be out of the question. Yeah. Okay. Boy, that's months in advance too, Alan. So uh, maybe we should just keep holding the slide here uh, and keep thinking about it. it. It'd be great. I don't know how everybody else feels, but I think that uh, you know the club, <coughs> in part, the role of the club is as an advocacy. I can't say the word advocacy group. 
Um, and uh, we're not doing that much of it. And, and, and I see some of the other groups uh, do quite a bit more. And I wouldn't mind jumping in and helping. In my opinion, it would take a hook of some time of some sort to attract anybody to it. Yeah. Given some idea for how to attract attention, I'm all for doing things. Yeah. That, that's a good point, Ray. Uh, uh, we would have to do some uh, advertising and our income that we have been getting in previous events by having car dealers appear mm. um, would certainly be different if it, if, it, if it would exist, it would certainly be different because there would be no uh, you know, place for them to come. So there's a, there would be a lot to think about. Yeah, uh, if I can say something, um, I agree with you, Ray, on uh, what you said, and, and to say more about that, um, I've just been aware lately, one of the problems with online, uh, the, the online media is that um, a lot of people are talking about being in a bubble, and how do you get outside of the bubble that you're in, so if we're, this would be in a bubble to start with, in other words, only people who are interested or have EVs would even know about it. Yeah. And uh, whereas if we're at a parking lot or something, everybody that comes by sees it and goes, hey, I want to check that out. And that I think that's a huge difference. And, and I, I don't know how to address it. I'm a little concerned about putting energy into something like that, that that we really have to be creative to get um, get attract people outside of our bubble. That's That'd be interesting. Maybe a group, if we can get interest from other people in the organization about doing this, maybe just some brainstorming about what could be done. I, I agree with you, John, about being in a place and then people just, that's how we got started in EVs. You know, we saw a note and then we showed up, but another time we were just coming along and there were the EVs in a, in a grocery store parking lot. And uh, that was the follow up. I've got an idea on that point. But it's, uh, I can't summarize it in a quick sentence. If um, somebody wants to get into this a little bit more and could call me, I could describe it at length. Hey, Ray, why don't you, uh, uh, to start, uh, go ahead and uh, write up your thoughts on it to NBAA discuss, and then people can start uh, talking about the idea. And you'll probably get some phone calls from there too. That's the email to NBAA discuss. Yeah, in fact, uh, hey, Alan, um, uh, I'm gonna, it doesn't have to be Alan, somebody, uh, somebody volunteer. Would somebody volunteer to send out an email to NBAA club? Actually, it has to be one of us on team that does that, an administrator. Uh, NBAA club um, uh, announcing that we have the discuss group. Just send the same email that we sent the last time, so Ray will have it, and we'll have the link for discussion. You can join the. Yeah, group. I can do that. Okay, thanks, Ellen. Thanks. One one more thought. I mean, Ray, again, you trigger some thoughts on on my yeah. head, and and also Sonia. I think you said something about wearing a stick, putting a sticker on our car. I thought, what if on that day, we just we built a like a flag that we could stick out of our cars that's really obvious and just drive around all day, you know? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, John. I, I was thinking that, you know, sometimes, especially if we go into more sheltering, there might be an opportunity to do like a, a physically distant drive project that would get better press coverage. Yeah. That, that, that would be interesting. I, I, I think, Let's bring it up and discuss. I want to discuss it too. I mean, uh, let's find some venues and some ideas on how to do this. That would be cool. I, I just had an idea, and, and I'm not much one for bumper stickers, but I wonder uh, if we could get a decal, a bumper. I'd be happy to put it on my RAV4 EV. It says, I love driving my EV. For more information, contact NBAA or, <clears throat> you know, we could all have those on our bumper stickers and stuff. Well, we can, we, that's a great idea and we can get that. Let's get into discuss because uh, I can see that too. And then uh, Cecilia, once we, and Lowell, once we get the website uh, easier to deal with, we can have information on the website, right? 
I, I, by the way, I didn't ask you, you guys yet, and we'll, we'll talk about it later, um, see what progress we've made on the web team as far as making it easier to deal with the website. All right. Let me go on to the next slide. <laughs> John, why don't you pick this up? Hey, yeah, the, um, so the Electric Aircraft Symposium is uh, kind of, is something that the CAFE Foundation that Bruno and I and Alan have all been involved with at some point, um, it, which is uh, really about efficiency. It's a, the, um, it's about flight efficiency and uh, electric has been where we've gone in the past we've had pretty big um, big uh, symposium uh, meetings where people pay 450 bucks to come and then last year it was gosh, year ago, we, we charged less and it's we're just trying to figure out how to get the word out and of course then with the virus it, it, it was challenging but there are people in the group who are putting on a, a virtual event and it's uh it is a 75 dollar fee for you can see the the intro free i'd highly recommend you know that anybody interested uh, do this um there's we're gonna have speakers that are talking about what's happening in the current electric uh, aircraft field as you know you know norway has committed to having the regional air transit all electric by 2040 and there's just a lot happening i mean a lot happening um in this field so Pretty interesting. Uh, it's a pretty cheap way to listen to people talk about it who are people professionals in the field. Um, so anyway, that's it. Yeah, I saw that first day is free. Um, on the next slide here, um, I actually went to the site. And so the slide deck will be available. It's, it's posted already. Um, and it has, you know, what's going to be discussed each one of the days. Oops, I went the wrong way. Sorry about that. Yes, and I'll be presenting there too, so you all come now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so this is something that I've been doing. Uh, I got something from Stanford. I was getting their newsletter, energy newsletter. There's a whole um, environmental um, uh, institute at Stanford that uh, I used to go to the um, SRI talks. And um, uh, Stanford has started this, and that's how we met the, the head of the Institute and been going to multiple meetings there. And so I get their notices. This new program, Storage X, is really interesting. And, and Lola, you were interested in batteries. And I gave that presentation on what I learned about batteries in order to give the presentation. Um, but here, they deep, deep dive into it so you can the link here will get you into it and you can get the different presentations this last time through it was stephen chu um the future of storage uh and what i found interesting in this was um the take that he has which most of the researchers are now uh coming to that uh, the lithium ion uh has limited utility and um, doesn't scale um we're going to see uh, later in the presentation. I'll bring it up, but um, he actually maintained that uh, hydroelectric sized differently, and helium, sorry, helium, hydrogen, <laughs> okay, will probably be the predominant storage mechanisms uh, for the century, and that the hydrogen cycle, which is just being seriously investigated, could become efficient. Then um, there's an, another talk that was given yesterday by uh, an included, um, oh, I just lost his name, uh, from MIT who started, um, I think it's called Form, um, which has uh, uh, fuel cell batteries and using sulfur. And the interesting thing is this is only 50% efficient. But with a 50% efficient, but the lower cost, it turns out to be a better option and it has lower environmental impact and blah, blah, blah. I mean, they're doing some really great stuff uh, in, in both places. So if you want to see the video with Stephen Chu, it, it was enlightening. It was a little too fast because he had a lot more to say. News. Um, this one was really interesting. <clears throat> uh, who sent this to me? Uh, Sonia, did you send this one to me? If you're on mute. 
All right. I did that thing that Cecilia said not to do. What was that? Outside the, uh, if you want to <laughs> use the space bar and hold it down, you have to be on the screen. Uh, yeah, um, right. <laughs> that's the problem I have. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did. I did send this along, and I thought it was, uh, you know, certainly um, quite powerful because I think you know they're talking about a trillion euros. Yeah. So, you know, and and the thing that got me was a climate neutral EU by uh, twenty fifty. There's, I mean, I have it later in in the presentation also. If we don't get to it. I want to talk about Shell Oil as well and, and what they said they're going to do. Um, vehicle charger rebates, Alan, I picked up most of the notes here. Do you want to cover the highlights? Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So th this is um, through Sonoma Clean Power. Um, and essentially what it is that they're, they, have uh, received uh, money from the state and they're contributing some money. Uh, I've forgotten exactly. I think they were about a quarter. Well, it's, all on a quarter it's all on the slide. It's all on the slide. 5.1 yes. versus a, 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 a 1.5. Um, and so uh, a, a level two charger rebate can be $7,500. Uh, and the DC fast charger up to $80,000, which would cover uh, up to 75% of the cost of the DC fast charger. The um, uh, $7,500, unless there's a very unusual situation, should easily cover the installation of a level two, in my opinion, anyway. I mean, because the, the charger itself, uh, if it's a if it's a private type, it can, can cost as little as five hundred dollars for a decent one. So yeah, but I mean, the infrastructure cost can be there. We put four in at the Xilinx campus, and it costs sixty five thousand dollars. Level it, two. Yeah, well, it was all the infrastructure costs because ADA has one of the things you should point out about this. This is for public publicly available chargers. It's not for your home charger, uh, and. Mm. Uh, uh, and they have a list of places where where it can be installed, but the then ADA um, comes into it as well, and so you have to comply with ADA requirements. That's where sixty five thousand dollars worth of cost came. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Any, anything else on that one? Otherwise, I'll go on to the next one. Uh, go on to the next one. Okay, California just established in, in its CARB. Um, um, established guidelines, not guidelines, requirements for fleets. So starting in 2024, um, they want to have 300,000 zero emission trucks by 2030. That is 30 to 50 percent of the trucks. 40 um, percent of the big rigs uh, and half of all the cargo and tra uh, travel vans uh, and 75 percent of the box trucks by 2035 to be zero emissions. That's 15 years from now. That is a turnover in the fleets in a 15 year period. Um, now, I didn't see whether that was, that's probably all new new vehicle sales. I'm not sure, if, I can't remember if that was for the, for, that had to be the fleet itself. Um, yeah, because in the end it says 2045, all vehicles, all, all vehicles should be all electric if feasible. Um, I worked on this Sunnyvale Sustainability uh, Climate Action Plan, and they kept putting in "if practical," and, uh, and 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 I suggested that there be a policy in the city that, if practical, if feasible, um, <laughs> uh, was not allowed in the city, <laughs> in this any place in the city charter because uh, it's always an out. Anyway, this applies to anything, any of the pickups over eighty five hundred pounds as well. Um, it does not include light duty trucks. That's preempted by the EPA. But yeah, down at the bottom. Light duty, I thought, actually, I thought light duty is up to 10,000 pounds. So they uh, changed that. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, that surprised me. The regulations were actually written to 10,000. So, and when I read the article, thanks for pointing that out. I read the article. That could be a mistake in the write-up or something. But it, yeah. it, 
the way it's, it's written. Um, trucks are 12% of California's greenhouse gases. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Uh, and uh, look at the numbers, 1,500 of the 1 1.5 million trucks in California roads are currently electric. What, what percentage is that? Is that 0.01%? Uh, um, and there's 15, that, this is, I mean, you watch these things. I mean, I worked in this business, so I saw a lot of it, but 15,000 trucks travel in and out of Los Angeles and Long Beach ports every day. So uh, this is a big change. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it works out. I can't remember who sent this hey, one to me. I, I, sent, I sent this yeah. in. Uh, at least I was one of them anyway. Yeah. And I thought it was, it was interesting that uh, this in Portland, Maine, uh, their refuse disposal company, um, Echo Maine, uh, has ordered two 100% electric refuse trucks that uh, will be powered by electricity generated from uh, their refuse, essentially at the at the landfill. And these trucks uh, um, are able to um, uh, run all day, you know, do all their work for each day uh, on a single charge. Um, and they, you know, when faced with a choice between going natural gas or going to this system, um, which is sort of interesting uh, in, given our discussion last month with the Sonoma County Transit, yeah. they, felt, they felt that it was less expensive to go with this system and definitely cleaner. So, uh, but yet, did, you, did you read deeply in the article, uh, part of the reason for it was this, they had already gone to um, a refuse uh, treatment um, technique. I forgot what it's called now. Where you very much heat up, uh, um, you heat up the waste to a point where uh, has virtually uh, uh, no um, no pollutants left. Uh, but it generates a lot of electricity doing that. And the problem they had was their plan for their treatment. Uh, was based on economic plan based on selling the electricity, but the demand for electricity dropped So it became a money losing proposition. So part of this was to use their electricity so that they could balance their budgets So that's why the electricity is both free and it was wasted before because they couldn't sell it um, So it was a double doer for them. That's what promoted the electric over anything else. I know the Alliant Electric Company um, I had an interview with them last year. I, I had a job with them last year they planned on putting 400 electric buses in California. And I thought someday in the future, maybe we should do a presentation on the different techniques that are being used in the truck and bus business. Um, it had a given way that things were built before and that's changing and lines. An example of one of the companies changing that. I might have another slide on that later. Uh, Jerry. Yeah. With just a, a thought came to me, I, you know, refuse trucks is, have always just struck me as being horrific. Right now, they seem to be with a current provider, they seem to be less noisy and less polluting, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm just thinking, does this, how do we get this information as an activist group, get this information into the, into the, to the faces of the people that, that make plans uh, for the future of our local uh, refuse company. Well, you know, how? Yeah, there's uh, actually each one of the cities has a representative that's on the board or whatever the advisory board uh, for, for instance, we use RICO or whatever it is uh, um, um, here in, in Sebastopol. And uh, both the city council, city council members appoint um, um, uh, citizens to be on uh, advisory board. That would be a place to, to bring it in, I think. Um, one caveat on this, having experienced it, I, most of you know, I probably have spent close to 30 hours on my back in the dump at five degrees below zero underneath an electric uh, refuse truck uh, trying to make it work. Uh, that motive had done. <laughs> there are very few that are electric. These are, I think, the first two for Lion, and they're using their standard chassis to do this. When I read this article in more depth, 
this is, these trucks are actually gonna be used to move from the waste treatment plant to the landfill. So they're not the pickup trucks themselves. Those trucks are bloody complicated. Um, if anybody could ever get to Sacramento and see what they do with their trucks, unbelievable what they do. I mean, they know exactly where the trucks are. These are not electric. They know exactly where the trucks are. When they pick up a can, it updates it to a database. So when somebody says, you didn't pick up my trash today, they can tell them exactly when the trash was picked up. Uh, and it does it real time. So they, they sound like clunky machines, but uh, they have a lot of electronics on them. I'm not sure the ones here do though. Um, but you know, this is another example, John, of where I think we would leverage the group NBAA Press as uh, advocacy uh, and outreach group. Alan, uh, did you send this to me or I just tripped over it? I think you must have tripped over it. I didn't send it. Okay. Model, all the Model S's, the long range plus Model S's going forward will get a 20% boost in their range. No change in the battery. They changed the software, they changed the regen package. Um, they changed the weight of the seats without changing the um, luxury of the seats. They changed the way the battery pack is designed, but not the batteries themselves. And they put in lighter drive units. Basically, this is a weight reduction uh, solution and algorithm optimization solution. Um, and they said it was a whole bunch of small changes that resulted in a 20% range boost. That will be included in all of their long range vehicles going forward. It's likely, just looking at what they did, that in many of these things, and they changed the wheels too and the tires. Um, many of these things, I could see if they're less expensive that they're gonna put them into their other vehicles too. So the ranges will go up in the other vehicles without a price increase. By the way, th this is associated with a $5,000 price reduction at the same time. It's still an expensive vehicle. I think it comes in at about $80,000. Does anybody know if Tesla's ever going to cover up their rear wheel, wheels um, like they should? I, I think that might be a, an aesthetic uh, move that they would probably only offer as an option, not as a standard item. Yeah, I'm just yeah, interested because my my data with a leaf says that it, it helps significantly. You know. Oh, really? Five percent or no. more. That com combined with with covering the wheels so with the flat surface, it got ten percent on the leaf. Well, in addition, wheel covers on your plane? In, in addition to the wheel covers, they can actually reduce the weight on the wheels themselves and get a narrower tire. They could change tires and wheels on these cars. Yeah, well, they definitely changed the tires, and, and, and it's worth look, taking a look at what they did because they changed both the wheels and the tires. That would imply they changed um, the the size of the tire as well if they're changing the wheels, right? Um, you have John, you have wheel pants on your plane? Be quiet. Uh, I don't know mine either because I like to stand on the wheel. Um, <laughs> uh, the announcement on the million mile battery, and it's not just for EVs, patents that uh, Tesla has been um, filing, a lot of this had to do from that battery presentation I gave as a result of them acquiring other companies uh, for the various technologies and the developers. They're pushing forward. Um, they've got a 4,000 cycle cathode. The word I get in most places is that they're, right here it says that they're, they're uh, uh, it says it's, NM, it's not NMC, but it's a change in it. Um, but the other thing that I read in a number of places and uh, when they talk about the million mile, is they're probably gonna to go to lithium iron phosphate. So I was surprised to see it in this article this way, but everything else I read said to go to lithium iron phosphate. Hmm. I left two diagrams on here as well, which I thought they were interesting. Um, the one is showing uh, the manufacturing in, uh, uh, in China and Europe and in the US for uh, lithium batteries. It is uh, somewhat disturbing. <laughs> uh, and you saw um, uh, Biden pissed off Trump just a couple of days ago because he said, we need to move manufacturing <laughs> back in the US. I mean, this is pretty obvious. You know, uh, 
uh, we're not even close. Um, even with the mega factories here, uh, we're not close. The other one was this diagram below. Um, you've seen uh, before, and when I did the presentation, and it turned out it was in these articles as well. Um, actually, I think I picked the article up at uh, RMI. I'm trying to get my mouse over there. And you know how these diagrams read? Uh, basically talks about the characteristics of the batteries. Here's the lithium iron phosphate, which is fairly well balanced in a bunch of things. And the one that it does really well at is how long does it last and how safe it is. So safety and longevity are the two things. Now, it's heavier. It costs less too, but. Um, oh yeah. So there's an electric utility uh, uh, freight corridor being created. Uh, yeah, 50 mile, every 50 miles on I-5. I, I list of the stations that'll be there in phase one by 2025 and 2030. Um, that's being uh, built out by, I forgot who it's being built out by actually. But we're gonna start seeing the, the freight companies doing this. And what, one of the things that I got out of the article that I read on this one, again, I don't know if somebody oh. else sent this to me. Do you send it to me, Alan? Yeah, I, I sent it, Jerry. Yeah. It's, the freight yeah. companies aren't doing it. It's actually uh, a combination of utilities. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. Example, yeah, yeah, yeah. SMUD is doing it in the Sacramento area. Yeah. And as you have here, there's yeah, right there. Be 16 in California, five in Oregon and uh, Washington space at about 50 miles. There it is, 50 miles yeah, apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot. So that, that goes right a, along with that mandate that you had a slide on earlier. Yeah. Uh, requiring um, electric uh, big rigs. So it's good that they're going hand in hand. What was really cool in the article uh, was something that I read at the very end. They surveyed fleet managers. And this is my paraphrase, not theirs, but basically they said this, you build the corridor, we'll be there. So, uh, well, Jerry, I, I, I don't know if I interpreted what they said exactly how you have it here. They said, <laughs> it, yes, it could accelerate our use of electric trucks. Uh, to me, <laughs> okay. that's, a, that's a long way from you build it, we will come. All right, so you're a pessimist, I'm an optimist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, everybody, there's always a link down at the bottom. My wife says that I don't give attribution. The attribution is the link at the bottom. So if you want to get a different interpretation, you can click on the links and, and read the, the articles. Uh, Electrify America finishes its first EV uh, cross country. Um, it's the first of two routes, 70 miles apart is the average, uh, 2,700 miles. Um, it does have some 350 kilowatt stations. Um, Boy, I got a lot of typos. Uh, <laughs> uh, so at, at that, you get 47 miles for every 10 minutes that you sit there. And Jerry, as I recall in reading this, um, the average amount of chargers, whatever, charge points, whatever you call it, yeah. per station is four. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's good. Uh, that's good. It's better than, you know, a lot where you have just one now. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have a later slide where there's another survey which talks about the number of heads per station on average. Uh, and there, uh, Tor, uh, when you sent, Tor, when you sent the note uh, that we should uh, do a little report on all of the different networks, I think that's a great idea. This one I already had in the deck, um, but it would take a little research to find all the others and get a lot of the details. I think that's worth a presentation. Yeah, actually, I, I agree. Now, now that this is oh, uh, on online, that's great. Uh, yeah. You know, so people can take a road trip, and I can tell you. Well, C Cecilia can also tell you. Yeah, it's it's fabulous. Yeah. So is that along Highway Forty and Highway Ten? Uh, I, I think that's that's, that's seventy. I think. Yeah, that think. looks like seventy, except Ex mm. except from Utah to LA. I don't know. I don't know what what that is. Yeah, but this thing in, I think 70 is up here in Pennsylvania. I, I don't think 70 is down there. Well, maybe uh, I think that's, no. that's 80, I think, uh, Jerry. But yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Because look, I, I know, I'm trying to figure out where Pittsburgh is. It probably is right there. 
I yep. think that's uh, from 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 LA up to to uh, Salt Lake is uh, 15 I 15. Yeah, yeah that's uh, 70 going through Denver. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't done the cross country drive in a lot yeah, since I was a college student probably. This one was interesting. Um, <clears throat> did you send it to me, Alan? Uh, or I did. I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, it, to me, it's a great idea, and they got funding to do it. Um, uh, put in uh, independent, I guess you'd say off-grid uh, DC fast chargers. Um, uh, as you can see there, there are four parking spaces that I tried. I even went on their Envisions website and they didn't uh, say exactly, but uh, I assume that there is just one plug uh, per, per station. Mm -hmm. um, and but 50 kilowatts if you're out in the middle of nowhere that's a pretty decent charging rate so yeah yeah um, uh, so it's one, all of the, good. One, one of the issues that I saw on this one uh, is the number of kilowatt hours uh, as well that they can get from the solar system. I think I remember these guys uh, years ago at um, uh, oh, I forgot the name of the software company but it was one of the ones in uh, in Palo Alto uh, had a, an EV day and these guys were there and set up one of the stations and I said well is that really practical the solar panels were only as large as the parking space so I don't know how much power power energy would you collect in a day um, I'm guessing you collect about 11 kilowatt hours in a day but if you have a 50 kilowatt charger you know how do you keep it full but that's that's the thing you probably you probably can't but they're only doing these on remote location yeah so yeah i'm uh, sure yeah. they're thinking is there isn't going to be a line of people there uh yeah so it's just sort of a safety thing yeah it'd be interesting are, uh, that's a route i'd like to take so i may try one of them are those batteries uh the big boxes underneath the uh collectors i don't know and i, 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 have, I was wondering the same thing yeah i, I don't know either they got to be someplace know. right yeah yeah Okay. Uh, this was just a report on what the fuel savings are. Um, a, a report came out of the DOE. Uh, it's kind of interesting. It's the Trump DOE uh, talking about the fuel savings. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, recharge rates, that was interesting. Eight cents to 27 cents um, per, per kilowatt hour. You know, work that but, against you know, Jerry, I, I saw this also. The, um, what was interesting to me is they said that in uh, Alabama, Mississippi, and Hawaii, the the rates uh, could be higher. Your your cost per mile could be higher than in uh, than for gasoline, which I don't. I, I know electricity is expensive in Hawaii. I don't know about Alabama and Mississippi, but they also said the same applied to Tennessee which I don't get yeah, because yeah. they have the Tennessee Valley Authority there. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Well, I understand that a lot of uh, those Southern states still use coal to generate their uh, electricity. Okay. That, that may be right, Bernie, but, but the Tennessee Valley Authority is sort of like a Grand Coulee Dam up there on the Columbia. Yeah. No, no, I'm not disagreeing with what you said. I was just saying, uh, it's dirty. It's dirty electricity. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. that too. Yeah. And expensive because coal's gotten to be the most expensive power source at this point. Yeah. Um, this one was a little confusing for me because I know these planes have been delivered to the states already, um, but uh, the EU has approved its first electric airplane type certificate. So they didn't have a type certificate before. That's been a problem straight across the board for electric uh, planes is that uh, in, here in the States for sure, the FAA um, uh, and buses and whatever else, they simply didn't have um, the regulatory written down and, and uh, 100 years worth of experience of uh, we're gonna look at these. Um, uh, and uh, you guys pointed out, uh, uh, I think Alan pointed out, uh, this is the same firm that has uh, won the Green Flight Challenge. Actually, they've won it four times. Uh, they designed their own lithium ion battery packs so they could reduce maintenance. That I thought was interesting. 
and they've certified the powertrain separately so other manufacturers can buy the powertrain from them and be certified. This, this happens in California with buses as well. The powertrain for, for the motive buses, for instance, is certified, so therefore anybody who used that powertrain was certified as well. Just wanted to say that this same aircraft is now uh, there's like five models in California and Fresno. Um, ah. The University of California Fresno has got a, there's a guy there who's been super active and um, they're going to start training with it. And uh, there's a, there's a temporary certification from the FAA for it. So it's, it's, it's that's, he's at, he's at Fresno Chandler right next to Bill's hangar, I think, because I just picked my plane up. And uh, after it's been there for six months for the two-day uh, upgrade, um, <laughs> and the hangar next door, which has all the electric airplanes in it, was still closed. Yeah, the the cool thing is that this is pushing the FAA, which is the Federal Aviation yeah. Administration, to get the certification through for electrics. I mean, it's basically been pretty much ignored because it's different, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, this is cool. It's happening. Well, what's what's the range of these kind of guys? Just like they can go like an hour and a half, maybe. Yeah. Um, so they're really intended for local flight and training, but yeah. they can cut the cost of training for the. You know, there's a huge lack in the in the pilot availability for airlines and everybody yeah, in the training. Yeah. Just, yeah, Bernie, you might have to go back to work. They might change the age to eighty. <laughs> They almost have to go to 85. <laughs> hey, hey, Bruno, are you still on? Uh, yeah, I forgot what year. Yeah, Bruno, when, when did we go down? Wasn't it in Florida that we went to a FAA deal about certification for electric aircraft? Right. How long ago was that? Uh, at least 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's happening. It, George buys plane is about to get certificated too by the FAA. Oh, so there it's, we go. It's happening. Hey, come on, stop looking ahead of the deck, will you please? <laughs> yeah. Um, and and uh, but this one's interesting because this now fits with what Stephen Chu was saying, was that uh, uh, we're going to start seeing. Uh, not just batteries, but we're going to start seeing hydrogen, uh, and certainly in aircraft. And he thought it'd be predominant in aircraft. The hybrid one just seems so obvious. Uh, anybody who flies knows that uh, once you get to altitude, <coughs> you want an electric plane. <laughs> it just simplifies everything so much, uh, and you don't need that much power. Anyway, oh, yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of movement. Yeah, good. Just the problem with with small aircraft like this and hydrogen is that you have too much too much volume and not enough uh, you know not enough airplane. So it's yeah. more applicable yeah. for the intermediate size and regional yeah. trend. Yeah, and we saw that in uh, last month's presentation. We saw a number of them that are now flying. Um, and the other thing that I saw was in interesting on this one. You know, most planes are not water cooled for the engines. So here we go. We're water cooling the batteries. Um, another twist on aviation, I thought this one was interesting. Um, and these are guys out of Airbus, and they're based out of San Francisco now. And uh, Bruno, separate from what you've been looking at, these guys believe that uh, short versus vertical takeoff uh, will get them approved much faster, uh, and they can do the design for a half a, half a million dollars, or sorry, half a billion dollars less. Um, and they want to get to uh, landing and takeoff um, in, in 300 feet. And at that, they want to use it for not the last mile, but the middle mile uh, in deliveries. And there's their, their flow as to where they think they fit. And they're well-funded. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, what's that? And they're well-funded, yeah. They're well-funded? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's exactly the same market we've been we're going after also with okay. a a plane that's twice as fast and carries twice as much also. Um, this one, I just got to the environment and um, we keep seeing this. The temperatures are changing rapidly now. 
um, and above the Arctic Circle, um, it's increased more than four degrees C. You know, we've all been working at, uh, we're at one degree C now and one and a half uh, leaves us in pretty good shape. Two means we have to change our lifestyles uh, and four means we're screwed. Uh, um, the Arctic is caught on fire and it's now had, um, uh, its temperature was 10 degrees C above normal uh, through March, April and May. That's pretty amazing. When you, when you say caught on fire, do you mean literally like literally, northern... literally caught on fire? Yeah, above the Arctic Circle, uh, there's uh, n numerous fires. They haven't had them before. Isn't this it is... the partly the methane coming out of the tundra and so forth that's melting? This this is on the surface, and and maybe it is methane as well. But uh, on the surface, uh, the trees are burning. That what what trees they do have and foliage is is burning. That probably will warm up the ground some more, and then. We'll get some melting and then the methane will. And if the methane burns, that's actually better. <laughs> it becomes carbon dioxide. And so uh, as a GHG for the next uh, uh, 10 years and certainly 100 years, um, that would give us some relief if it burns. Um, after seeing the Stephen Chu uh, article, then I ran into more discussions on hydrogen and um, uh, I, I found an article, I think this was, uh, yeah, it was Green Tech Media uh, who provided this one. But has everybody else heard about the different kinds of hydrogen? That, that how it's, it's the same hydrogen, but it's how it's produced. I hadn't heard the terms before. So green hydrogen is what we want, and that costs today between $3 and seven fifty dollars a kilo. Uh, gasification of colon and, and lignite is brown, not good. Gray is uh, uh, really inexpensive, and that's how most of the, the, the work has been done. Um, uh, blue, you do that, and then you capture and store. And something new, turquoise, uh, uh, you break it into hydrogen and solid carbon. Uh, there's a whole bunch of work being done at Stanford on how to increase and improve the hydrogen cycle and end up with solid carbon or something else that can be buried, not just uh, captured. Um, and captured as a gas. This slide I think I had last month as well, but it, it, it still I was, I was looking at it and this had to do with hydrogen or batteries and um, uh, it's showing us where these things are. It'd be interesting in the next few years if the research continues to see how these percentages change and uh, uh, as far as efficiencies. And this one I loved. I've been telling everybody about this. PG&E is the first dual energy company, electric and gas, to announce that it's formally supporting the end of natural gas. They would like every city to pass an ordinance that says that you may not hook up natural gas lines to a new building, which are any, any new gas lines. They want to retire natural gas. And in fact, they want to become a distribution and transmission company, and that's it. They don't want to be doing the energy either, but that's a whole separate thing. Um, and it's amazing. Uh, and Andy's been on to Andy uh, Ferguson's been on top of this. Um, um, how much we uh, need to do in the natural gas area, and how much impact it have environmentally. Okay, input from the peanut gallery. It's so much easier when you're in your room and you can just bullshit. <laughs> Who's passing the peanuts? Uh, I, I think you're starting with the peanuts. <laughs> hey, Ray, what's your basic idea? Well, with, first of all, we had the one fast discussion on the, on the vehicles. Um, if you want to finish that, that discussion or you guys want to have it offline? Well, I, I'm always willing to talk, but I, <laughs> I, I'm not sure that I can convey the picture adequately in just two minutes. Uh, uh, I'd give you three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look at and this is the disappointing part of the Zoom for me because um, um, there's 22 of us here. And actually, if I take a few of us off because we're on here twice, 
uh, 20 of us here, it is difficult to have the open discussion that we normally do. People would ask about their various vehicles. Um, yeah, I'm Excellent. interested in it. Yeah, go ahead, jump in. I mean, I don't, I just need a moment to bring something up. Usually like Ray, I can talk to. <laughs> <laughs> so interrupt me if not, but um, <clears throat> you know, it just keeps, I keep on my mind the idea that um, using uh, you know, or do-it-yourself cars for uh, powering the home, for instance, is, is really on my mind a lot, particularly with the fire season essentially here and, um, you know, are we going to have more trouble and are people going to be putting up generators again? It just, which drives me nuts. And, and I'll be honest, I have a generator here that I <laughs> am willing to use, but I, I hate it to death. So anyway, just the idea that, um, you know, using an electric car, even a, something like a Chevy uh, Volt, like I have a Chevy Volt DC-DC converter in my little Geo and mm -hmm. put out a, you know, uh, 1.2 kilowatts or something. I mean, or it'll put out almost a couple of kilowatts. And I so I could power a little inverter and do that. I, I, my plan is to do that, to put a little inverter in the car, uh, hook it up to the DC DC and have a switch that'll turn it on uh, if I want to power the fridge or something, you know. So, so that's really actually, and this could be done with a Chevy uh, Volt as well. Um, if you you just do have to leave your car on. I know we've talked about this a little bit. I, I'm unclear. I've heard uh, things both ways. Uh, that is that uh, right now, as far as I know, the the Leaf is the only car that has publicly stated that they can yeah. uh, send energy out of the car. But I've also heard that the Tesla is set up that way, but nothing official from Tesla. Does anybody know what's going on? And what I've heard is the Tesla is not set up that way. The Bolt from the various manufacturers, um, they all say that shortly they'll support the Bolt, as, not so much the Bolt, but uh, the, you know, that standard. Um, so certainly the, um, it was part of the Chatamo standard at the very beginning as well. I, I spoke with Jeff Mathias who gave us a presentation several months ago about uh, batteries and a solar system for my home. And I talked about the, the DC off the battery for the, uh, from the car as well. Um, what bothered me was they wouldn't even look at it. I mean, you need to have the cutoff and all of that stuff. And, and he said, it's not allowed. He said that um, Jeff Cypher is experimenting. I don't, and he's getting some approval to do that uh, at his own home with, with, I think he has a leaf um, to see how it works. And I know one of the guys down in Mountain View uh, as part of Mountain View Carbon Free uh, has on order uh, one of the systems we've seen and is, is installing it. But, it would be great for this to be standardized. You get 40 kilowatt hours in a relatively inexpensive car, uh, as opposed to, I just boosted mine from 10 kilowatt hours to 12 kilowatt hours. That's $28,000 uh, and, and doesn't go any place. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. I, I, I can add to a little bit to that. Yeah, Tarek, um, go ahead. Yeah, so with the uh, Canadian company, Osiaco, and they have a, uh, inverter slash bi-directional mm -hmm. device called the decibel. Yeah. They, um, they're supposed to be coming to North Bay late summer, trying to set up an office, but initially they're, so what that device does is both, uh, it replace, if you have a solar array, it replaces your existing string inverter. And it also acts as a, uh, EV charger and a bi-directional, right. um, interface with your car and initially it'll only work on chatamo protocol which is the leaf and one other car um but the hold up with allowing um bolt and others the ccs protocol is that the ccs protocol is in the process of being updated so that it can handle bi-directional yeah. uh, flow and so that's really it and when that changes so if you install one of these devices now it's a software upgrade to and maybe a cable change to allow you to use your bolt you know in six months but the first the thing they also told me was that in blackout mode your solar array initially you know eventually would be able to continue to 
re, re, uh, replenish your car battery. Yeah. But in the initial phase, that part is not functional. So that was kind of an interesting thing. Oh, really? The other, yeah. So I was like, okay, then I'll wait, you know, get it right. But um, the other product that's coming is a Spanish company called Wallbox. Yeah. And I think they're, it's Quasar or something, their pro model numbers. Well, and well, it's, it's, purely a, it's purely a vehicle to grid device. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's it's something I think the latest they told me was in 2021, and again it's only Chatmo initially because the CCS protocol doesn't allow for it. So we have uh, if if you look back uh, either last month or the month before on the news items, we covered um, a number of the. It turned out we we knew of one company and somebody else had given a presentation on a box, and uh, then we started looking at some of the others. I think there are three or four companies now with reasonably priced um, uh, vehicle to grid uh, DC chargers for the home at 7.7 .7 kilowatts, because that's what we typically will use on our level twos. Um, and they're all designed for that. And from my point of view, I didn't understand why they weren't looking just like a solar panel and don't try to do anything else. And if they look just like a solar panel and they sit on your AC line, it'd be like you have a bunch of, uh, and faces sitting out there as well, uh, just well, the charging up the bottom line. line. The bottom line is you can't buy them today. And so what Jeff is probably doing is is proto or piloting yeah. the the Canadian version at his yeah. place in Katati. But the other thing that uh, John mentioned was the idea that you just get a, a standalone 1,000 watt or 1,500 watt inverter, 12 volt inverter, that you can connect to your 12 volt battery whether it's a Volt or an EV or a truck or whatever, and charge your refrigerator during your blackouts. And so that, I heard feedback up from a lot of folks that did that last, the last time, last fall in November. But what I would add to that is a little timer because you don't really need that going all the time. I mean, you can run it for a couple hours, keep your fridge cool. I mean, that was the biggest thing when, during the blackout was, Mm -hmm. my freezer or my refrigerator you well, know and, i actually and, have one that comes off my inverter or my solar system so you can run a, a cord um flip switch run the cord into the house on the fridge and you're done obviously only works when the sun's shining but yeah yeah that's plenty yeah <laughs> there, 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 are also, there are also portable batteries <clears throat> that you can charge you know when the power is on or some of them even have little solar panels that you could charge with solar and then just keep it in your closet. And then when the power goes out, it can run your uh, refrigerator for a while. Right. And we had a presentation by Mike Newell on the one that he purchased for the company right. that had presented back in February. I missed that meeting. Um, I think it was February. And uh, uh, it turns out there's two or three other companies doing the same basic thing. When we had the power outage, I just plugged into the, the cigarette or whatever, the accessory with my inverter and used that for running things in the house. But I would rather clamp onto my battery cable if I could on the next one and get a bigger inverter. So, uh, John, if you found a good one and it's not too expensive, I, I might look at that if I haven't got my array in place. Uh, David Harris here. I want, would say that what I found is that LG refrigerators have inverters in them so you can feed them dirty you know uh, cheap inverter electricity and because they're going to turn it to dc anyway so they'll work on a square wave uh inverter i mean the, the cheap inverters that you can buy at places like harbor freight or you know the chinese inverters that you can order online lg it's not going to hurt those refrigerators because they run on dc and and uh uh control their uh, compressor motor by uh, how they invert. Uh, I mean, I don't understand enough about electric motors, but, and I was doing that off of our uh, uh, Chevy Bolt uh, and putting the, uh, the cheap inverter, you know, direct to the lead acid battery terminals. Huh. Uh, because I found on the internet that basically uh, the leaf and the bolt both are supposedly producing it somewhere around one and a half uh, kilowatts um, to the lead acid battery. 
so that either one of them, you know, if you're eliminating yourself. And the difference in elect, um, refrigerators is the LGs also take less power. If you look at them in, I went into Best Buy and some of them, you know, need eight kilowatts, but the, the LGs don't. Uh, and one of the things to look at is anybody has an older refrigerator, if it's more than 10 years old, uh, don't try this at home. Um, and they have gotten a lot more efficient. Anybody else? Otherwise, I'll move into the next portion of the program. I want to say one more thing. Um, okay. Stan, when you, when you said what you did about your, um, your solar uh, inverter, I, want to, I think you have a Sunny Boy. Is that right? Yeah, I want to get one of those. You can better buy them for, for $1,000. <laughs> You know, it's like, it's so, it's so great. I, I may upgrade and um, anyway, but Stan, think of this, this, uh, this is for somebody who's not afraid of 400 volts, um, <laughs> but the solar, the solar system is typically around 400 volts. Okay. Well, so is an EV, you know, it's really interesting and they're both DC. That is if you don't have, you know, in phase inverter things, but um, so the cool thing is I'm really tempted to, to plug, um, to have a you know a big switch that can switch from my my car that has 400 volts to the solar panel, so that in this in the day, I can run the uh, the Sunny Boy or whatever on that you know and plug my refrigerator in to it, and at night I just switch it over to the car, and now the car's feeding the same voltage to the inverter and it's running still. You know, it's like holy shit, that's easy. <laughs> we'll try it at your house first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, on to presentations that I'm okay with everybody. And I should explain, um, <laughs> we didn't have a presentation. And uh, about uh, six months ago now, a friend of mine on the East Coast called and he was talking to Lightning uh, Motors uh, because he wanted to change his career and he decided maybe he would invest in them and he called me to ask if, if I wanted to work with them. And it was about two wheel vehicles, motorcycles that would uh, hold themselves up um, without us clutches falling over. That's the reason for, uh, uh, I'd like to get rid of my electric scooter because I've already dumped it twice. It's a great scooter, but uh, I'm just not a scooter rider. Um, anyway, uh, so I had put the presentation together because I just wanted to tell him, hey, you don't shit about electrics and you don't know anything about two wheelers and you're sitting here and you want to invest in this company and you think this is a great idea. This is not new. And so I started putting things together. I haven't heard from him since, but here's the presentation <laughs> I did. <laughs> so anyway, they come in all shapes and sizes. But wait, there's, there's more. So I was trying to explain to him, uh, there's a lot of uh, electrics that are out there um, in the, in the two-wheel version, um, and uh, people have done a lot of things. A lot of these things are dead and not there anymore. But I did run across a site uh, that had uh, a summary of a number of them. It was a pretty good site, and that's what I used to compile the list here. So let's start with two wheels. Um, uh, this one is supposedly the, the father of uh, uh, modern cabin motorcycles. And, and uh, if we have time at the very end, I'll show you a video of something I built more than 10 years ago when I was working with this guy and another friend of mine in a startup that decided they wanted to make two wheel cars uh, side by side. The wheels aren't side by side, the passengers are, uh, two passenger. Um, anyway, this one was a safety, it's two passenger, um, and it only cost $94,000. Uh, <laughs> so they started this back in 1980, uh, and as one of the first, uh, and it first came out motorized, but then later as EVs. Lit Motors um, uh, revised that design and with a range estimate of 170 miles. Um, what's nice is, I get about four, 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour in my car. So this has a two passenger vehicle. Now you're getting closer to 10 miles, uh, 10 oh, kilometers. Huh. Well, that's not terribly better. 
Oh, no, it's 10, 10 miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah, sorry. Um, again, safety, it's self-riding, it has outriggers. Um, oh, this one's single passenger, sorry, it's drive-by wire. You can lane split with it, I wouldn't. Um, very low drag. And it's the first one that actually drives in reverse as well. So here you've got basically a contained motorcycle that goes forwards or backwards. Uh, it's configured as a car with a steering wheel. So I started listing that as well. Um, they've gone quiet. They were, what's that? What keeps it up? I, you know, uh, this one, uh, Lit Motors, they have um, a gyro. A very, oh. in fact, uh, if you go to the website down below, I think this is the one. Let's see who the founder is. Yeah, Danny Kim. It, you go to the website, you'll see demos of them trying to knock the bloody thing over. And, and it stays up. The company's gone quiet as of about two years ago. Um, and the, the price that they wanted to do for the first thousand, you're gonna find on all of these, they have production run numbers and they wanted to get down to about 14K. Uh, it looked like a pretty good vehicle. I don't know why it disappeared. And often these guys have technical problems or cost problems or whatever else. But when you get the three wheels, we see a lot more. Okay, now luckily, I heard from somebody, I'm not gonna say who yet uh, I heard from, <laughs> but I looked at my presentation and, and I had this down as Acromoto, uh, <laughs> but it's Archimoto. Uh, and I won't tell you who it was that I, I, I noticed in the videos um, who said, well, you need to cover these guys. It turned out I had them in the deck already. Uh, but I didn't have this slide. Uh, so I clipped this out of one of the videos, Dave. Uh, 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 Caleb couldn't make it today, yeah, Caleb Lander, because he's taking the kids to the zoo. And he said, oh, you got to cover these guys. I've got one on order. Um, but rather than me speaking to this one, Dave, since you're an investor, why don't you tell us about it? <laughs> Say what? David. You want me to talk? Yeah, you I want me to talk about yeah well, that's you in the picture right Dave? Yeah. no that's not me I've that's never, not you I've never, that's not me i I've i saw that picture and i was sure it was you and you written me the message i go oh yeah right right looks, <laughs> looks like it huh it sure uh, does i've never yeah. written one i've never seen one <clears throat> but i've been following them for uh, quite a few oh, years exactly. The, they've been developing, uh, and I think they had eight different versions or something like that for la probably the last 10 years. Uh, this guy, Mark, and I can't pronounce his last name, um, oh my. he was oh my. into video gaming, and, and I think he sold his video gaming company for, I don't know, 25 million or some crazy number, and decided he wanted to do something environmentally friendly and totally change the way we think about um, electric vehicles. He, he doesn't like the fact that people are driving around 4,000 pound electric vehicles when a lot of times it's only one or two people and, and they only go short distances. That's kind of the goal, but they've gone through, like I said, uh, probably eight, I don't know, eight or nine different iterations yeah. and finally started producing these about a year or so ago. Um, they have produced, I think, uh, a little over 100 now, but they have about 4,000 orders plus. Um, mm -hmm. And if you if you want to look at um, an appreciation in stock price, take a look at this company. It's public uh, already, just yeah. Within the, yeah. Within the last couple of months. Um, they also, um, they there's a lot of things that he's done that's really interesting. He's um, linked to, and I can't remember, I didn't really plan the talk here, but um, he's linked to a, a, comp a nationwide company that will provide, uh, as said, they will provide service for them. So they have the service aspect. Um, he just has a deal with um, Monroe Associates. I don't know how many of you know that. I'm not totally familiar, but they're the company that uh, takes Teslas apart and all EVs apart for other companies and then evaluates them about how efficient they are and so forth. But he's just got a deal with them and they're gonna be working um, in refining these vehicles as they're being built and driven. And 
every video I've watched of anybody that's ridden one or driven one is just totally blown away. They really like them. He also um, has three different types of units, one for you and me, uh, one for uh, delivery services, which has drastically changed in his favor over the last few months, obviously, and one for emergency response teams, which they're currently trying out in Oregon. Uh, so quick responders, two people, uh, you got a car crash or whatever, they can respond uh, very fast and get into areas where you couldn't take a truck or a vehicle. Um, so he, he's got, there's a lot of other things. One of the interesting things early on is he wanted to put these uh, in areas where um, people go as tourists uh, for tourists just riding around locally. Um, they have one, I think, unit started up in Key West before this whole coronavirus started. They were going to do another one in San Diego, and I was hoping that would, and I think they've contracted, but they haven't started it up. And what, it's like you go to a, an area like San Diego, and you can rent one of these vehicles for two people and drive it around, and it's got a 100 to 120 mile range. And then you come back and it, they're not selling them per se, but it, it's another means of income. So he's, he's looked at a whole spectrum of things here. And um, like I said, he's, he, the goal is to get it down to about $12,000. But right now, I think the, the fully loaded one is, like it says here, about 19 grand or so. So now, can, um, Caleb, it's pretty Caleb interesting. Had, yeah, Caleb had, had ridden it already or driven one. And that's what led him to putting a deposit down to, to get one. Oh, okay. He knows much better than I do. Though. Yeah, but you know, Caleb now, I, I'm guessing Caleb's probably about 35 or 36 now. He's probably only had 50 vehicles. So, uh, no. in his lifetime. Now, by the way, you're going to have to go find your 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 long lost brother here because there's no way. Uh, <laughs> I just was watching the video and I said, no wonder he wrote to me about you need to cover this one. I, I, here's, I just throw something else out there. Yeah. I looked at this thing as a perfect tow vehicle for people who have RVs and spend a lot of gas money. And when you get to a location, this would be a perfect vehicle for driving around and you plug it in at the campground. So the fuel's basically free. You drive it around the location, do all the sites and everything. And like most RV people, if they want to go somewhere, they just pack up and move their RV to the next yeah. place. But it, it's a great tourist kind of thing. So I, I I'm hoping the company does well because I got a little bit of money on it and it, it yeah. really has gone north here just within the last month or two. And I saw no videos that showed enclosed models. And so what Yeah, they, they're, they're supposed to have, uh, you can get hmm. doors for it. Um, a lot of people say, my brother is a motorcycle Harley guy and everybody I talked to when I first started talking about investing said, well, that's a stupid idea. You can't ride it in the winter. Well, there's videos of them actually in open things, riding it on snow and ice and all kinds yeah. of stuff. And yes. it, it has a cover over the front so I, They have videos of them. You can ride it in the rain. I've ridden a, a motorcycle in the rain, so I know mm. how, what a stupid idea that is. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's hey, going to be in and it's got a space frame kind of thing too for safety. So this next one, uh, a cycle car, um, John, do you know this? Because I found a reference that linked this to Thunderstruck. Oh. <laughs> Are you there, John? I was giving the hand signal. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh I, 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 you didn't pop up on either one of my screens this way. Okay, fine. Um, anyway, this was a highway uh, capable one. Um, I, I'm not sure if it was ever marketed or where it was developed because I couldn't get all the details on it. It's registered as a motorcycle. Uh, by the way, the, the uh, uh, Ar Arkham motor also, it, it rides, you steer it with uh, handlebars and, and uh, the accelerator and all that. It's not um, configured like a car. Now, this one says it's registered in a motorcycle, but it's configured like a car, so it has a steering wheel. Um, it said it was offered by these guys. I couldn't find a production on it, uh, and there's the price. This one, uh, uh, too bad Peter's not here with us. Myers Motors at the end of the uh, 
runway two zero at uh, uh, Hollister. Two zero, I think it is, um, is where their facility is. They do mostly helmets. This is a very large helmet and the motorcycle pieces. Uh, <laughs> these guys made quite a few of them and then just didn't make money. The price was twenty four to thirty. Four thousand dollars. They sold the the rights to a company in Ohio, uh, which was uh, Myers. Uh, Corbin sold it, and uh, then they produced it, and they're no longer in production. But Mike Corbin got interested again. He said, "What if I start dimpling them? Also, maybe I can get a new patent." And he's now working on an EV version at thirty three thousand dollars. I don't think it, oh, it's running too far. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I don't. I don't know where that is now. It's fine. <laughs> does somebody want to make a comment on this one? Ah, okay. So he's now upgraded lithium ion. Peter's been doing the same thing. Um, and uh, it, it was one of the first, you know, right-sized vehicles. And he's hoping to make 100 units. <clears throat> Here's Toyota's. They've shown this to a number of places. I haven't seen it in production in the U.S., but it's in production in in uh, Japan um, with a 30 mile range, uh, 37 miles an hour, which is about what my scooter does. So uh, it, it uses uh, lean technology. It has a single passenger back seat, but when I looked at it, it was like practically nothing there. It's uh, like the, the back seat in a Cessna 140. These guys, I, I had put a deposit in on this and then they disappeared. I got my deposit back. Um, they're back again. They got refunded. They bought back uh, the patents and the original founder is back trying to improve the vehicle. Um, this is the Aptera. Um, how many of you know the Aptera? Yeah. Um, Range a thousand miles. Yeah, well, that's their target range of a thousand miles. Now, I don't know. That's a look. <laughs> yeah, that's what it said in the article. Uh, but you know, even the first first generation, uh, they were doing uh, uh, electric. Then they were doing a hybrid. Then they were doing a motor, and then they went out of business. Um, so who knows uh, if it'll make it or not? Well, yeah. the The main thing about the thousand that's really interesting thing is that they're covering the thing with solar, and it uses so little energy that it actually can can have an impact. You know, it's kind of interesting. oh, I didn't see they were covering it with solar. Okay. Yeah, you know the the solar cells on the car. I read somewhere that if you parked it in the sun, you could get seventy miles of range just uh, in a day? a day from the car being parked in the sun. That's hard to believe. Seventy miles. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and the other thing is, um, it, uh, it's going to be about four times more efficient than your typical electric car and yeah. super aerodynamic. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I've invested in it and I got to sit in one in the first one around. You know why they went bankrupt? Because they were trying to get federal money and they hired some guys from Detroit. They took over the company and ran it into the ground. So. Ground, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the reason the solar panels, I always use four as my number, you know, four miles per kilowatt hour. If I divide that into 70, I come up with, you know, something like 17 kilowatt hours in a 12 by 12 sun power array. Uh, my typical yield was about 12 kilowatt hours a day. So a vehicle is never that large. And when we were doing buses, we were talked about it as well. And it turned out um, they couldn't power the vehicles. This one Caleb just brought uh, 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 the EV3 uh, was going to come out in the Fraser Nash powertrain, but the deal fell apart. And you could have picked it up for just 52,000 uh, pounds. Um, uh, and uh, Caleb found people who actually had bought them and they, they drove them for about 2,000 miles and then had them for sale. So he said they were really fun for a while. Um, uh, these guys seem pretty real. Uh, the Twike now is expensive, uh, but uh, this seems like the luxury end of the three wheelers. And it's it has pedals, not for for I don't. I, 
Includes pedals for charging the battery. Yeah, okay, I guess you get the pedal in town too. But uh, it'll go 70 miles an hour, but it has pedals. Uh, so I've seen sure. older versions of that in Europe. Yeah, this is out of Switzerland, that's right. Yeah. And if the goal is simply efficiency, four wheels can have a small format. And these guys I remember from years ago. And I don't know if they're not around anymore. This was the Tango. I was trying to explain this one. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're in Europe. Uh, Tango's in Europe? Uh, that's what I've seen, yeah. Okay. And you notice what battery chemistry they decided to use. Okay, the safest battery chemistry, even though it's a little bit heavier. So it's kind of, kind of like a, a Piper Cub when you sit in it. Uh, you have to straddle from the back seat, uh, which you do in a Piper Cub as well, you straddle the front seat uh, pilot. And it's thinner than a lot of motorcycles. And then here's Myers again, and they moved off of the Corbin uh, to their own design with four wheels at $27,000 as, a, as a, a small vehicle with a, a small um, format. Okay, I was just gonna bring up one other thing and show you how um, you don't always, let me see if I get in the right place here. Uh, Bum, 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 bum. Let me drop that. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. Just a second, just a second. I want to get back to, I've got the gallery here in front of me. I want to get out of the gallery. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's over here. That's why. New share. Okay. Let me see if I have it here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here we go. Here is me trying to convince somebody who's working on a two-wheel vehicle that was side-by-side. -side. And his whole idea, I had a friend who put money into this uh, and worked on it for a while. Um, two-wheel vehicle, side-by-side uh, -side that used uh, Segway, Segway, whatever, technology, but in did the balancing with front-to-back wheels, which we now do see people have done um, instead of side by side wheels. And so I built this because I thought his idea wasn't all that smart. His idea was to drive in town in an upright position, but when he got on the highway at 70 miles an hour, the vehicle <laughs> was going to incline. <laughs> <laughs> to this position now which one of you wants to go down the highway at 70 miles an hour <laughs> in this position I'll pass <laughs> okay he was so excited I gave him this when I was done building it do you at least wear a helmet <laughs> well this is as fast as I got Bernie <laughs> <laughs> I had to share it because we all do stupid things. <laughs> yep. And this yeah. been my list. <laughs> <laughs> and after I walk away from this and and I said to him, I don't think this is a great idea. That was my last <laughs> part. Um uh, and I invested in building this thing myself, <laughs> which wasn't cheap. <laughs> What's your rate of return on that investment? Uh, like zero, yeah. Totally negative. Uh, let me go back to the deck here. Uh, where are you? Okay, where are you? there we are. Okay. Um, so, so some more stuff to read about. Let me see if I can get the right picture. There we go. Um, there's a Wall Street, and, and I think I didn't get a chance to bring this up. I left it from last month as well. There's a, a Wall Street Journal review on electric vehicles. Uh, I still haven't even seen the whole thing. 27 minutes on what's happening with electric vehicles. Um, there's a review also, or this video that I told you guys um, uh, everybody couldn't get to. Sonoma Clean Power has a series of webinars now on 
different energy topics. This one's on residential and storage technologies, and it's actually mostly done by uh, Caldwell Associates out of uh, Denver, which is a research group. They do the presentation for PG&E, so you'll get a hint of what a P or one of the presentations. PG&E's classes are not run by PG&E people. They just organize them. Uh, and uh, uh, that, uh, and often they say things bad about PG&E. So they're really good in open classes. You'll, I learned a lot in them. This week, uh, in that same series that uh, Stephen Chu uh, was in, um, uh, was a board member um, from Shell who had been in a number of other companies and he is an environmentalist. And he was reviewing with them what Shell Oil Company is trying to transition to. Shell Oil has um, dedicated itself to be carbon, carbon neutral in all their products and their manufacturing by 2050. So they wanna move from being Shell Oil Company to the Shell Energy Company. And it's interesting the things they've been doing. You saw in earlier presentations, they bought uh, solar charging companies and are rolling out more charging stations. Um, they're working on carbon capture as an industry. Um, so it was an interesting webinar and I need to listen to it again, to see how much is true and how much is bullshit. Um, the video from our last meeting is posted and there's the link to it on YouTube. So if you missed the last meeting and you wanna get through all of our bullshit, uh, it's there and we have no one on deck again for next month for a presentation. And I don't have another one that I made up. So if somebody has an idea and somebody's willing to volunteer to put something together, uh, that'd be great. Um, and we have lots of ideas for presentations, um, but we need presenters to put them together. How would you do a virtual car show? I want to show my why so you guys can take a look at it. Hmm. A virtual car show? Yeah, I'd show me a car so everybody can see it, you know, but I don't have the equipment to, to do anything. You can walk around with a tablet or something, but. Um, that is how I would do it. Yeah, could, I say, yeah, walk around with a tablet. You could, yeah, I could just either use a phone I can tell or you, a Zoom or something. Just, just that uh, uh, little video I did uh, demonstrating the Model 3 auto, new Model 3 autopilot. It took me a while to figure out how to get that video in an acceptable format. Uh, I tried a video <laughs> camera. Uh, I tried uh, various ways of setting it up in the car. So if you're interested, uh, let's connect. And I can tell you where I failed for, you know, in a few hours worth of trying. Okay. So, and I'll tell you also, after Alan sent the video, I spent about six hours uh, reframing the video um, and adding things to it, mainly because it was fun for me. The tool I use is Camtasia. So once you've collected videos, even pictures or whatever else, you can put the whole presentation together if you wanted it live, as opposed to a deck. Um, put it together as a, as a Camtasia and then you spin it out as MP4 and we share the MP4 and we watch the MP4. I've done the same thing with uh, YouTube. So I've pulled them down off of YouTube on a presentation that is maybe 45 minutes long. But for us, it's interesting, only about 12 minutes. And uh, yeah. I'll go ahead and then use Camtasia and find the 12 minutes and take a bunch of the other stuff out. Okay. If you want help with that, I'm always happy to do that. Yeah, well, you know, hopefully I'll get my car back eventually. <laughs> so, anybody else? Ideas on, I, I, please, if, if you've got ideas on a presentation, you want to volunteer for a presentation, um, let's do it. You know. Yeah, it looks like Cecilia, I think, has a friend with a video on uh, on Dynex, so. I, I would just echo that Stan's idea about doing a little video share about your vehicle, it, it, it would feed, it could feed into doing some public outreach if those videos land on the website. So, you know, this is a big thing. It's struck me is that we, this group, a lot of great internal discussion, but people still, you know, there's not a lot still out there for, to share out 
with the out of the greater population. So anything we can do that has dual purpose for internal sharing and out outward, that would be great. Uh, Jerry, well, how did you pronounce that uh, app, Camtasia? Camtasia is C A N T A S I A. Okay. Uh, you have to you have to buy it, Bernie. I mean, it's not that expensive, and I, I've kept it for a number of years. Yeah, it's, it's worth having. I, I just look into it. Maybe I, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can do a lot of fun stuff with it too. Okay. I, I don't know if you guys noticed when I took Alan's. I've kept putting notes on it and comments on it, and then picture on picture to show the bicyclist riding next to a, his vehicle. Well, uh, uh, it showed up in his vehicle. Uh, and then, of course, the intersection I walk across where his vehicle would have run me over uh, <laughs> without stopping <laughs> or slowing down. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And, and you Jerry, can also. What, the one audio. thing I will say, Jerry, is that uh, the quality of the video after you're going through your app was noticeably reduced. Well, and, and Alan, the reason for that wasn't the the app. It was that I tried to get the video size down to a size which uh, would fit uh, on the website without wiping out all the storage that we have. Um, okay. So I could have spun it out at the same quality. In fact, I respun it again at a higher quality. I spun it out at about six different times trying to get um, the, because your video, remember it took a long time for you to figure out how to get the video to me because your video was so large. Um, uh, so uh, uh, that was that was the issue, um, but it wasn't the app itself. It was the way that I produced it. Okay. Is that video on a, on the YouTube channel? Um, it's in the meeting. Uh, so I included it in the video for the meeting. So it's nested inside the meeting. I the video itself, I think I also have on the drive, but it's in in the in the meeting that we had. Um, we recorded that meeting, right? Yeah. I, I was thinking of like a high quality quality version could be hosted on YouTube without impacting storage space of our on the um, platform. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Um, I could spin even a larger uh, version of it. I mean, the first one that I did was um, uh, the same size as, as Alan's video, which was that's why he couldn't send it to me. <laughs> he couldn't. He couldn't find a place to store it to send it to me. I mean, that was, that was part of the problem too. Uh, YouTube still has limits too, doesn't it, Cecilia? Um, it will, I think it'll, it'll serve the quality a little bit lower than what you initially uploaded it as, but there's not any um, limits like that that you practically run into. Yeah, okay. All right, anybody else? Otherwise, our meeting is done. And All right. Thanks, Jerry. Hey. Okay, guys. Good job. Thanks, Good everybody. to see all of you, and I, I, I love to see you in the room. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, hey. All right. Bye, everybody. See you.